As one disaster subsides in part of the world, a new disease continues to spread around the world. And that's where we start today's show. I'm Carl Azus for CNN 10. First, the good news. The Australian state that had seen the worst of the nation's bushfires is now officially free of them. The flames have been extinguished in New South Wales. Wildfires had been burning there in some form since last July. There are still fires burning in Australia, but recent rains in the nation's southeast have helped a great deal in stopping their spread or putting them out entirely. What is still spreading, as far as the planet is concerned, is the new coronavirus we've been telling you about this year. The outbreak that started in a Chinese city has spread to every inhabited continent. It's infected more than 90,000 people and caused the deaths of more than 3,100. For perspective, though, the flu can infect tens of millions every year and kill tens of thousands, and that's just in the United States alone. But the coronavirus is new. There's no universal treatment for it yet. Doctors still have questions about it. And Chinese health officials say it can be transmitted from person to person by direct contact and through droplet transmission, like when someone who has it sneezes or coughs into the air. Doctors say if you're concerned about coronavirus and want to help prevent its spread, the best ways are to regularly wash your hands with soap and water, to avoid touching your face, and to regularly clean the surfaces you touch. As the U.S. Surgeon General puts it, it's appropriate to be prepared for coronavirus. It's not appropriate to panic about it. But concerns about it are having an impact worldwide. The United States Federal Reserve, the country's central bank, cut a key interest rate yesterday. It's a move intended to protect the economy from being hurt. Worldwide, flights have been canceled to countries with outbreaks. Schools have been closed in countries with outbreaks. Some major gatherings and sports events have been canceled or postponed. And one question that keeps coming up is, will the coronavirus affect this summer's Olympic Games in Tokyo, Japan? Five months to go until Tokyo 2020 and rehearsals are in full swing. A practice torch run outside Tokyo, though the flame hasn't arrived yet. Some crowds, cheers, corporate sponsors. This is the fun stuff. This is what organizers want to be practicing for, want to be preparing for. But given what's going on in this part of the world, they're also preparing for something else. Specifically, the coronavirus outbreak. Dozens of cases have been reported in Japan. As Japanese officials try to stop its spread, safe to say they're worried about crowds. The new emperor's birthday celebration canceled. March 1st, Tokyo Marathon called off for all but elite runners. So the natural question is the Olympics next. There's no case for any contingency plans of canceling the games or moving the games. Officials with the International Olympic Committee say they base that decision on guidance from the World Health Organization, which has told them as of now, there's no reason to cancel. IOC officials have already set up a virus task force and are working closely with Japanese health authorities. But for those people who have prepared their entire lives for this summer, the athletes who will stay in this village behind me, any thought of the games possibly being interrupted is tough to think about. So they're staying positive. It's a little bad now, but I think by them knowing that the Olympic Games is coming into their country, that, um, you know, they have everything under control. Hopefully they have everything figured out and um, by then. Here in Japan, ping pong practice goes on unabated. The virus threat looms. I'm worried about whether Japan can actually host international guests if this infection keeps spreading. But Japanese officials say that's currently their top priority. It's important for us to have visitors feel safe and enjoy Japan while here, the vice health minister says. So this is our big focus. Japan wants the games to be safe and successful, but only so much is in their control. A lot is still unknown about the coronavirus, and who knows what happens between now and the July kickoff. We don't know how far it's going to spread, and we don't know if it spreads how long that will last. Could that put the Olympics at risk? Yes. I have tickets, though, and I'm not giving them up. Nobody wants a virus to ruin the games. The Olympic flame, after all, is designed to not go out. The hope that this rehearsal turns into the real thing by the end of July. Matt Rivers, CNN, Tokyo. 10 second trivia. What company made the Newton, a personal digital assistant released in 1993? 
Apple, Casio, IBM, or Palm Pilot. Though it wasn't the first PDA, and though it wasn't successful, the Newton was released by Apple in 1993. 27 years later, smartphones accomplished many, if not all, of the functions of the early PDAs. And while Apple's Newton didn't take off, its iPhone has been a tremendous success. But the company's been accused of intentionally slowing down older iPhones in order to influence users to buy newer ones. To settle a lawsuit about that, Apple just agreed to pay as much as $500 million. This would translate to $25 per phone to people who owned certain iPhone 6s and 7s that were bought before December 21st, 2017. In that year, angry customers and technology analysts found that Apple's software updates were actually slowing down their iPhones. Apple admitted it was slowing them down, but the company said it did that to protect the phones from issues with their older batteries. Apple apologized and offered to replace iPhone batteries for $79, then it reduced that price to $29 in January of 2018. The company says the battery replacement program did hurt its revenue that year. In his research in the longevity, CNN's Dr. Sanjay Gupta found that our lifestyles probably play a bigger role in how long we live than our individual genetics do. A study from the Harvard School of Public Health found that five healthy habits can increase a woman's lifespan by 14 years and a man's by 12. They include diet and exercise, you've heard that before, but they work, in addition to keeping a healthy body weight, not drinking a lot of alcohol, and never smoking. And Dr. Gupta adds that having a strong social network can also help. Not Facebook, but actual people you spend actual time doing actual stuff with. Seems a positive attitude makes a difference too. I think how we respect the elderly is quite a problem in some places around the world. In the United States, oftentimes people are seen as less capable, seen as people who no longer have anything to contribute. I thought it was really interesting to find that countries that really don't seem to have as much respect for the elderly found, perhaps not surprisingly, that elderly people suffered more from both mental and physical health conditions. But they also found in those countries that a relatively simple shift in attitude could have an outsized impact on longevity and joy overall as people get older. Becca Levy, one of the leading researchers in the psychology of aging from the Yale School of Public Health, says that the elderly who have positive views of aging live about seven and a half years longer than those who have negative views of aging. They're less likely to have dementia as well as some of the other markers of Alzheimer's disease. If you are an elderly person who has a positive view of aging, you're more likely to exercise, you're more likely to eat right, you're more likely to want to be around and take care of yourself better. I think for the younger people as well, when you get a glimpse of what old age can be like, it may actually inspire you to take better care of yourself, to eat right, to exercise, to try and be as strong, both mentally and physically as you can be when you get to be an elderly person yourself. And that could be why you're more likely to live to 100. For 10 out of 10, Roller Man sounds interesting. Let's see. A suit made out of carbon fiber and roller skate wheels. Check. A dude willing to wear it and turn it into an extreme sport. Check. Speed, as much as 60 miles per hour. Check. A plan to turn Roller Man into a comic book character. Okay. Personally, I think Roller Man would make a great pizza delivery man. As long as he keeps the pie intact and manages not to have a wreck, he could redefine the category of Meals on Wheels. Some would say a suit of plastic wheels is polyurethane. insane. But when Roller Man's out for a spin, he might look comical, but knows how to book it. So once he's got his bearings and he's ready to roll, it totally follows suit that the guy is keeping it wheel, y'all. Every day at CNN Tam, when I'm not making a horrible puns, I'm sent the name of a school that uses our show and subscribes to our official YouTube channel. Today, that school is Barnes County North. It's in Wimbledon, North Dakota, where we heard from the bison. Thanks for watching, everyone. I'm Carl Azuz. <laughs>